live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host. And we're, we're back. Uh, happy to welcome back to the program, uh, you know, regular guest on our program, David Richards, who's the founder and CEO of Wandisco. Hey, David, anything interesting happened since last time you know, we, we've talked to you? <laughs> well, I kind of got, I, well, you guys are a bad omen for me. Kind of left the cube in New York, got off a plane, got fired, and then four days later got reinstated, apart from that. Actually, nothing's happened, actually. Uh, hey, you know, it's good coverage in the Financial Times and, and lots of press and everything, so lots more people know about Wendisco right. now, That's right? I don't have Tourette's, I promise. <laughs> All right, well, uh, David, a AWS reInvent, I mean, in pretty impressive show, you know, we, we see you at a lot of shows, um, you know, many of them, you know, interesting, uh, lots of smart people, but I mean, wow, this is pretty impressive. They got up on stage, lots of things that I'm sure interest you. G give us your take of the show so far. It's fascinating, there are, I mean, this sort of must have been, I wasn't there when you know, Steve Jobs was launching the first Mac and, and so on, but this kind of feels more than just a small movement, this is a large shift in enterprise moving from on-premise to cloud. I think it's unquestionable that's happening. I mean, I'm sure you've covered it this week on the, on the Cube, I've not seen it, but 32,000 people are here. Uh, virtually every single vendor that you could ever think of is exhibiting in this exhibit hall. You can barely move uh, for people. Our booth traffic has just been phenomenal uh, this week. Um, and I, it, it really feels like this is a seismic shift in the marketplace. I know we've been saying that for a while, but it really does feel that way. But well, why do you think now? Is, there, is, is it just we just got here and it's the overnight success that's been 10 years in the making? Or was there an event or something that really kind of tipped it over to where we are? Because clearly, very different than last year. It, sort of Cloud V1, and you guys have been covering this for a long time, was really companies that were born in the cloud. It was the Airbnbs, it was the Tinders, it was the Facebooks and so on. Those companies were actually made, born in the cloud. What's now happening clearly is enterprise is moving to the cloud, and Cloud 2.0 really is about a different set of requirements, a different set of customers. There are customers with massive petabyte scale data sets that they really can't take advantage of. They can't really scale out. It's too complex for them to build many of the applications they need to build. They now have to move to cloud. And you know, 32,000 people are not here just for the sake of it. They're here because they have to be here because they're moving obviously to cloud. And AWS have such a massive lead, I think, in, the, in, the, in cloud at the moment, in enterprise cloud. And that's probably why so many people are here. David, one of the interesting things to look at at this show is Amazon has some uh, opinions about where data lives, how it moves, where you process it, you know, all of those kind of things. You, you guys are kind of opinionated on those kind of things too, so uh, you know, g give us your view on, uh, on those kind of uh, discussions. I mean, I, I, I made a comment on Twitter, it was like, hey, uh, what do we call a data lake when it's in the cloud now? So, uh, <laughs> Well look, that's what happens in the cloud, see? What, the, what, one that's of the big reveals in Andy Jassy's talk this morning was a truck coming across the front of the stage. And um, I've had so many emails saying, is this, is this real, is, is this a joke? Are we now really moving data in a, in a semi uh, from on-premises in, into the cloud? And it's kind of interesting. I think, I think it's a little bit of a gimmick, to be honest with you. I think Amazon do lots of great things. There were lots of wonderful announcements today, like opening up Alexa and allowing, you know, and, and some of the things they're doing with serverless compute is just phenomenal. But I, I think a truck to move data from on-premises to cloud kind of feels like we're back in the 1970s to me. Um, whereas I, you know, I was talking to a, um, a, 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 the CIO of an automotive company a couple of weeks ago. They have a problem where you know, to move data causes an outage in their organization today of about 30 hours. Their data growth is going to be so vast, uh, the velocity is going to be so great in the next 12 months that that, if they use the existing technology today that they have today, would take them in the region of a month to move that data. So trucks are great for cold archival data. Well, they might be great for cold archival data. I'm sure you could, we could figure out a better way like the internet to move it. Um, but for our active transactional data, data that changes and moves, that's critical to the organization, 
you simply can't put it on the back of a truck and basically mail it to Amazon or with a, with a snowball. That, that, that really doesn't work. And I think the market really needs to be educated a little bit about well, what's possible and what isn't. And, and, and I, I don't know that Amazon would necessarily disagree with you. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the in the Snowball family, they had the Snowball Edge out there, uh, which was realization, hey, I might want compute, and even we're going to give you that new green grass, you know, Lambda serverless uh, type stuff so that you can do processing where there's no network or I can't do anything. But, you know, I, I guess, you know, I, if we know from a physics standpoint, I understand, you know, the internet's great, um, but, you know, if I want to move, you know, 100 petabytes or more of data, um, you know, if I, you know, even if I'm a telco, that's a ton of data that I need to move. So, I mean, but t t t tell me where, you, where there's a disconnect. So, the way that WANDISCO's technology works is we continually replicate data. So, we're, every other form of data replication is time-based. It re re sort of re requires the concept of a clock. Like, even Google, uh, who've got Google Spanner, which is kind of active-active replication, but relies on a satellite in the sky and atomic clocks, GPS clocks on every single server. We don't have any of that reliance. We're transactional data replication, which means if something changes, it gets replicated. And that's, that's, that process is continuous, which means that you can basically move data applications without any downtime or interruption to service. And that's absolutely critical for what I called earlier Cloud V2, which is the enterprises moving to cloud. They have to be able to get there without any interruption to service. Small data, yeah, you can use that kind of technology or non-strategic data, yeah, you can use this kind of technology. Strategic data and strategic applications, trading systems, you know, you can't be 99.99% .99 correct if somebody's got cancer or not, right? If you're using, you know, the cloud and machine learning technology to figure that out, you can't be, you know, almost certain, you need to be completely certain, and that requires data to be where it's supposed to be. Just, good. So, Amazon's a partner of yours. What's it like being a partner of Amazon's these days? Uh, and you know, give us your point on that. Amazon are a, um, a phenomenal company. They have to be, right? They've just built probably the world's most valuable enterprise uh, technology business, you know, by by a country mile in ten years. I mean, it's just you know, zero to ten billion in the, the, the blink of an eye is just incredible. And part of their secret is. They base everything on data, and I've learned a lot from dealing with Amazon, actually. Everything is data-driven. You know, they have this five whys, I'm sure you've read about it in the media, where you have to, you have to prove through facts and figures, not sentiment, um, that something is so. And that's, not, that's pretty uncomfortable for a lot of people. For us, it's not, and it's working with Amazon, their requirements, the bar is so high, it's made our products much, much, much better. They have a well-architected review that, that they go through with all their partners. They're, they're actually great to partner with. If you're not a very good company, I would dare say don't bother because they'll find you out very quickly. But they're a great, uh, great set of guys, very, very good to partner with. Uh, it's, it's very black and white, it's very, it's very uh, uh, quantitative, but um, yeah, they, they've, and they've obviously got a huge market. Yeah. One of the things I love about this show uh, is that the, the quality of people, uh, you know, is phenomenal, and you get such a—I a, mean, a huge cross section, not on location, size, industry. But one of the things I think that is across everybody that comes here is they're trying new things. They're open to, you know, moving forward, iterating, learning, uh, which. It's been one of the things that you know we kind of say. What what holds companies back is like, oh, I'm I'm doing it the old way. So, but what what's your experience been with the users? Any stories you can tell uh, from that standpoint? <clears throat> so, right down to the bottom of the organization, they're prepared to take any idea. I mean, Amazon Web Services, for goodness' sake, was basically a paper that was written and presented to to, to Jeff Bezos, right? Who said, yeah, that's a good idea, to uh, Jassy, and said, yeah, let's go off and do it. But they. Virtually every innovation in their organization is somebody coming up with an idea, and they have the mechanics and machinery to, to listen to that idea. We do it ourselves, so uh, we're looking at serverless compute and using Lambda so we can have replication literally as a, as a service that you can just call, and you can call Paxos, uh, which is our core IP, is based on Paxos, it's called Decone, so you can call that algorithm and get a replication service. You know, this, so this, these concepts, some of the concepts that, that Amazon are introducing, their ability to move so quickly to introduce new products is because they have this innovative approach where they allow people right down at the very bottom of the organization to come up with new ideas and approaches to doing things. And they are 
it's perfectly fine for somebody at the bottom of their organization to challenge somebody at the top of the organization. In fact, they expect it. And again, that's not comfortable for a lot of people, but I like the way that they go around that business. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Alexa, how's my replication doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Well, it's interesting you say that. We, we, uh, we had Malcolm Gladwell on uh, a month or two ago, and he talked about the most powerful organizations are the ones that let the fresh ideas bubble up from the bottom because it's the people that have not been tainted by being a part of the company that are new and creative and innovative in a different way of looking at it. And, and oftentimes they get squelched. So the fact that they let those ideas come up and also driven by data, pretty powerful. Well, it's interesting being at the show this week and I, I have two types of meetings. I have meetings with companies at the forefront of this cloud revolution companies at the forefront of building new innovative applications that were designed for the cloud. And then I have other meetings with um, companies, vendors, who have been caught out by this. They didn't see this coming. They didn't expect you know, so m this, this, this sea change to happen as quickly as it's happening. And they really are fighting and scrambling to know what to do. And this is everything from, you know, the big services companies, the, um, the, big, the, the, the big traditional enterprise uh, storage companies are really struggling to understand what they're going to do with the cloud. And they don't have those processes and procedures inside their, com inside their businesses like we do. Right. They, they can't change and be agile and nimble and take advantage of these new products and markets that are suddenly appearing overnight. Yeah, it's funny, the, uh, the guy from Accenture was talking about they don't want to be a system integrator anymore right now. It's it's services integration and really changing the way you think about putting this stuff together. It's very different. It is very different and it used to be the case that you get, and I know we've, we've all lived through this, you get the enterprise sales guy that turns up in the $2,000 suit and the Porsche parked outside and uh, comes in and sells you, you know, a piece of software and asks you how your wife and kids are doing and all the rest of it. Look at the audience here today. They're not going to put up with you know, that style of enterprise sales moving forward. People are buying stuff from a marketplace. The expectation is that you can choose, select, deploy, and build applications yourself. And that's how many of these companies are operating today. So that it's not just a sea change in the technology, the technology is facilitating completely different and new markets. Behaviors. David, I want to give you the, the final word on, is, is you leave the show, uh, you know, your takeaways, what you want people to know. Clearly we're in a, an era where yeah. this is going to be an enterprise cloud. Cloud 2.0 is all about enterprises that are taking their data from on-premises into the cloud. It's happening very quickly. 32,000 people are here this week. They're here for a reason, because they have to be. This is a sea change in the marketplace. And I hope that, Wanda, well I know Wandis goes to the vanguard of moving many of those enterprises from on-premises into the cloud very quickly. All right, absolutely, definitely agree with the sea change there. David Richards, founder and still CEO of Wandisco. Really appreciate you joining us again. We'll be back to wrap up our coverage of today at AWS reInvent 2016. You're watching theCUBE. Oh,